Welcome again. Right now we're at Acts chapter 5 verses 1 through 11. This is a story of Ananias and Sapphira. Hey, did you know that Ananias is actually an English transliteration of a Greek transliteration of Hebrew, which is actually Hananyahu. So Ananias's Hebrew name, original name would be Hananyahu, which means Yahoo has favored or Yahoo has grace okay and Sapphira is actually a Hebrew name Shapir Yah have you ever heard of anybody but with the last name of Shapira or Shapiro this is the same name okay just different forms different variations of Sapir Yah or Sapphira okay this is also a Hebrew word that is very closely related to the word sapphire okay Sapphire, Shapir, Ya, Shapira, Shapiro are all related, okay? Actually, the word super in the English comes from the word Shapir, Ya, or Shapira, or Shapiro. You see, in the Hebrew, there's only consonants, okay? There's no vowel. So, S, P, R, okay? Super. Shapir ya, Shapira, Shapiro, okay? S P R. I thought that that would be just a little interesting tidbit to start out with. So let's get into the scripture. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. Let's not forget the context which this comes from. Remember, the original manuscripts are not written in chapters and verses. You know, they were divided into chapters and verses later. But if you were to go to just the last part of chapter 1, it talks about how the apostles, you know, sold their possessions and basically they had like almost like a, a mutual money pot where they all just kind of chipped in. They, people sold their houses, sold their lands, sold their possessions and came and brought it to the apostles' feet and they distributed that money as they had need, okay? Nobody had lack and everybody shared. So this is where the context is in, okay? They were all in the process of sharing, selling what they had, you know, bringing it to the apostles and the apostles would distribute that money as needed, and Ananias and Sapphira did the same thing. You know, it says they sold a possession. Verse 1 again, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also, being aware of it, then brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land. While you kept it, didn't it remain your own? After it was sold, wasn't it in your power? How is it that you have conceived this thing in your heart? You haven't lied to men, but to God. Ananias, hearing these words, fell down dead. I've heard this happening even in modern times. I know it's not a very popular thing. That's why you don't hear about it on TV or hear about it on Christian radio. But I have heard of testimonies where people have just dropped dead. There's this one particular gentleman that I know of that was invited to speak at this church. As he was speaking at this church, he said the Lord led him to say, you know, such and such a pastor that's in this particular town or in this city, this particular pastor is preaching against this, this church. And if that pastor doesn't stop it, God will strike him dead. And sure enough, the next Sunday when the pastor got up in the pulpit to preach, he started speaking against that church and he dropped dead right in the pulpit. Well, you know, there was a recording of that other guy who actually prophesied that that would happen and that recording just went like wildfire, okay? And these kind of things still happen today. You know, I've heard a number of other incidents just like Ananias and Sapphira as well. And they are out there and they do happen. So Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and died. Great fear came on all those who heard these things. Great 
fear came on all those who heard these things. I mean, this is not a church that just preaches the love and the grace of God. Oh, come to our church and you'll feel butterflies in your stomach as we tell you how much Jesus loves you. Okay, this is a church where God moved in mighty and powerful ways. We read just a few sessions ago how God healed a man. And now we've got God striking someone dead. Okay, and so it says great fear fell upon all those who heard these things. Let me ask you a question. When did great fear fall upon your church? I know some of you might say, oh, well, you know, God, you know, and you come up with all kinds of different excuses. But listen, this is the book of Acts Church. I mean, most churches I know of says that the book of Acts kind of church is the model church. This is how we're supposed to be. You know, this is the example of the so-called New Testament church. Okay. New Testament church, and within very short period of time, we got people being struck dead. Verse 6, the young men arose and wrapped him up and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife, not knowing what had happened, came in. Verse 8, Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, yes, for so much. Oh, just a little white lie, is it? Verse 9, but Peter asked her, How is it that you have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out. She fell down immediately at his feet and died. The young men came in and found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her by her husband. Great fear. Here we are again. The words great fear came on the whole assembly. The word assembly here, ecclesia, means church. Great fear came upon the whole church and on all who heard these things. Again, I will ask you the question, when's the last time great fear fell upon your church? Well, I know some of you would say, well, you know, God just doesn't do these things today. You know, God is more gracious today. Why do you say that? You can't say that's Old Testament, right? You can't use that excuse. The thing is, when you have the Lord present in a powerful way, it could mean tremendous life and blessing to some and it could mean death to others, okay? Look at the Ark of the Covenant. When the Ark of the Covenant came into the home of Obed-Edom, it produced great blessing upon the whole house, but yet great curses fell upon the Philistines when they had the Ark of the Covenant. So the question is, do you have the Ark of the Covenant? Do you have the presence of God in your life? And I'm sure most of you say yes, but listen, if you do, it will produce great life and great blessing to those who are right with God. But it can also produce a very fearsome presence of God. This is New Testament, friends. This is New Testament. You have to seek God. You have to be hungry. Jesus said, blessed are the hungry, those who hunger and thirst for what? For righteousness. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness shall be filled, Jesus said. How do you hunger and thirst for righteousness? By just throwing yourself at the feet of God and saying, God, have mercy upon me. Make me right. Help me to repent. Help me to do what's right in your sight. Help me to fulfill your law. That's being hungry and that is thirsting for righteousness. And I guarantee you, if you do, you will be filled. Seek him and you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.